Welcome, my name is Dylan Young, Developer Advocate, working with Engagement Cloud Products, which consists of CDP and Personalize. Today, we will be walking through a web experience template creation process. This is a vital piece for the developer because this enables the developer to build out a template that then allows a marketer to create a web experience using that template, which is a much better experience for the marketer because they only need to work with editing fields or editing content instead of worrying about HTML syntax or JavaScript code. This session will focus mostly on the web experience versus the full stack. So the difference between those two is that a web experience is, is all about controlling your web page or the experience that you're creating using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or API responses using the CDP or personalized tenant. So you're not gonna be using, you're not gonna be writing code in your own code base to do that. You'd be doing it all through the interface. So it's a little bit easier to, to make changes. Whereas a full stack experience, this is something that you control from a control experience where you can trigger a flow, a web flow. Um, and then that would trigger a some sort of decision on that. So this is typically something that you'll see inside a mobile application or other experiences where you want to have a little bit more control over the experience or if you want to not have you know css html that you're writing on the tenant itself and you're controlling it from source control so let's go ahead and jump in so this represents a web experience execution map before we jump into the specifics i want to talk about the overall arcing information on this page the first kind of swim lane that's a light gray represents the server side sitecore cdp javascript that would run so this would run not in the user's browser, but in the CDP personalized instance. The next swim lane represents the client side process that runs in the user's browser. And then at the bottom, some useful information as you work in these different columns of different tasks that take place. What kind of data do you have access to? Do you have access to the guest? Do you have access to the audience? Those types of things. This kind of shows or what you have access to. So the user of your website comes to your website. This triggers an experience. Technically, st step two on here actually happens first. Somebody visits your website, there is your CDP JavaScript library that fires, and then it triggers the web experience. At this time, kind of simultaneously, a, a bunch of cookies are created, one of which is going to contain a bucket number. This bucket number typically falls between one and 120. And this information is used to determine which variant in the web experience will relate to this user. So if you have two variances for your web experience and a 50-50 split between the two, if a number falls for your current user in less than 60, then they'll, they'll get the first variant. If they get more than 60, up to 120, then they'll get the second variant is essentially how that works. After that, then we'll execute some page targeting code. So if you have any limitations of who should see a web experience based on page targeting rules that we're actually gonna create today in our demonstration, then this is where that code fires, it runs in the client. Then that bounces out to the server-side JavaScript that's running on the personalized tenant. This does a check to see if the audience filters apply to this user. Then it will do a call into the decision model to see if it uh, matches any conditions, if you have one. Uh, keep in mind these are optional uh, parameters, so if you don't have any audience filters defined or you don't have any decision models defined, then these wouldn't apply. It's important to also note at this point that if you have any custom code that's doing anything super complex uh, that's taking a lot of time this is less than ideal experience because each one of these requests is happening each time a user nav navigates your your page so obviously if if any of these hit and deems the user should not see that web experience then they won't make it further down the line but if you have a decision model that calls into an api 
takes a couple of seconds to respond, then that's not the ideal scenario because you're going to have to wait a couple seconds for this to return your web experience. Then this will generate an API response. And then lastly, this will return the web experience to your user. It will take the JavaScript that's returned based on the web experience, and then it will inject HTML into your page, which we'll talk here about in a second. So let's go ahead and create a web experience. So there are two elements or two ways to create a web experience. There is the kind of one-off experience with code uh, way of creating a web experience. This is more suited for a developer because the process of creating this, as you'll see in the next bullet point, is quite complex. It requires a lot of developer-focused tasks in order to create a web experience. The second web experience method is using a template, and this is a little bit more geared towards marketers because developers have already gone in, created all the technical aspects of a web experience, and created easy to use fields and options that the marketer can use in a user-friendly way to make changes to this web experience. So a web experience typically consists of different elements. For to be exact, there's the HTML part. This is the uh, schema or, or structure to what you're injecting into your site based on the web experience. So for example, if you want to pop up based on a web experience trigger, then then this would contain the code for the pop-up itself. And I've included a link there for uh, where you can get a little bit more information about handlebars. But handlebars is a, basically a, a JavaScript framework that's quite lightweight. It's a it's kind of a scripted syntax that uh, I think most developers can understand and, and work with. We'll be covering a little bit of those handlebar syntax as we get into the demo, as well as we'll cover how to create templated fields that are somewhat similar to Sitecore XP item fields. Then there's the CSS. Now it's very important that this is handled typically by a front-end developer or somebody very familiar with the CSS of your site. Now there's mechanisms and ways that we can kind of refine what elements are going to be overridden from the base website's CSS with our injected CSS. Now that's the important distinction. This is not us trying to just style the component because if you have classes defined and things like that from elements that already exist on your website, then those will just pick up from the original style sheet. These are CSS changes that where you want to override CSS or styling that exists in your site. The JavaScript is essentially a mechanism where we can use it in, in kind of the vital part of the JavaScript element in a web experience is to inject HTML from the first element into our pages. So we need instructions to do that. As, as a CDP personalized, we can't make assumptions of where a user might want to inject this. We don't want to assume that we always want to inject it at the bottom of the page or at the top of the page. We want to give you the options or the ability to customize where that HTML actually injects. And then lastly, the API. This is the API response. It uses FreeMarker, which basically is some syntax similar to handlebars, but more specific to creating JSON objects. Uh, the outcome is all about creating a, a valid JSON object, and you can use FreeMarker to do if statements, etc., or use variables in FreeMarker to uh, return a response. You can return data from the decision model, offers, real-time audiences, or even guest information that can be used further on your site in the API. Let's go ahead and jump on over to our CDP personalized tenant so that we can walk through the creation or review the creation of our web experience template. And then we'll create a web experience based on that template. All right, now we're in our personalized tenant. So let's go ahead and navigate over to library. In the library, we'll see a web templates. We'll click on that and that represents our web experience template. Now we've already created one called Featured Blog Post and it's already set to Published. We'll click on that option and we'll unpublish it. This is kind of a lock or unlock 
capability. So if it's published, it means the all the elements are locked and we can't edit it. But if we unpublish it and then make changes, then we can we don't have to worry about it, it's kind of unlocked it essentially at that point. So let's talk through these different elements uh, in a little bit more detail. So the HTML as previously mentioned, we are injecting in our case, in our demo, an article. And just to provide some context, I'm gonna be using my personal website for this. And I wanna be able to mimic adding a additional blog post card into this kind of collection of blog posts. It's essentially I'm mimicking how I want to feature a blog post in the future. So to do that, I am basically using in the HTML element a article item and all the elements that go within that. So to do that, as you see, I've just created an article item and I'm using the existing class elements that already apply to my website. So I don't have to, I don't, like I previously mentioned, I don't have to style these individually in the CSS. Those are already defined in the base CSS for my website. The things that you would do here, however, are defining custom fields. So as you noticed, there is a title field, there is a description field, and there's also a date. One other thing is also an image. I'm not gonna worry about images. I'm not gonna worry about the date. I'm gonna worry just about these title and descriptions. Wouldn't it be great that my content editors, my business users, my strategists, whatever the case may be, non-technical users could come in and provide a title and a description and not need to know all the rest of this HTML. Kind of like when designing or working on creating components for Sitecore XP, you would create different, you'd create a item template with fields. This is a similar concept except for Instead of creating individual items to define those template fields, you're gonna use handlebars, JS syntax to create those fields. And so that's what these represent. And so I've created one called title. This is the first parameter. That's the name of the field. And you can see actually the fields over here. So I have title. And then this is the data type, which is the second parameter. Then we have the kind of default value as the third parameter and then we have some additional options here is the field required what's the name of the group that is in as you can see it's in the content group and some other options and it's very easy to add new fields here you could have hundreds of options if you wanted to just to show how easy it is and how quick this updates you can see it's already refreshing over here on the right i've added a title two and so here's title two obviously i don't want the title two so i'm going to remove it if you want a little bit more information about other data types, which we'll show the color one here in a second, uh, definitely check out the documentation uh, for more information. So that's the HTML tab. Let's go on over to CSS tab. So a few things here. We're defining a same, similar syntax for our handlebars, custom field for border, but we're defining in a comment. This is just a sneaky way to uh, not have to define it down here. Um, so we're defining them all up at the top in a comment and then we just reference it in here. So this, so what this does is a, the name of the field is border. It's a color data type. It's got a default value of red and it's required and the group is styling. And so because it's red and it's using a hex code is we're just injecting it right in the CSS and this would just replace as a hex code of red. One other thing that's useful here is this. Um, this is basically a way we can target a very specific element. When the HTML is injected into your web page, uh, it's going to add a kind of a div around that HTML, and it's going to have an ID of BX dash and a unique reference ID. And so, and then now we can reference this using handlebars syntax. We can now reference that unique ID and therefore we can very specifically target that element that we're injecting. And so now the risk of overriding something that's already existing with some CSS that we've defined is quite low. And you can see that this is specified the group of styling. So we now have a styling and it's now got this cool 
color selector because we've specified data type of color. We'll jump over to JavaScript and this, like I previously mentioned, kind of its primary focus is on where to inject our HTML that we have defined here in this first tab. There's different options that are available, insert HTML after or before, and like I said, it's selector, query selector, syntax, so, or jQuery, if you're used to jQuery, then you'd be very used to the syntax, or you can even replace HTML if you want to replace a whole block of, of HTML with your web experience that comes in, then you can do that. And we're using post feed inside. So what this refers to is this, which is basically the parent wrapper to all our article blog posts. And so it's going to add it into this. And then lastly, the API, just some important things to note here is that we want to return JSON. So we're using free marker syntax to do that, uh, which is what this represents. This is a variable and one useful way to know how to refer to things is you can actually go to this data tab. And in this data tab, you actually have this kind of cool interface that you can actually refer to to pull in elements. So let's say you want to pull in the identity ref, then you can click on this little kind of copy icon and select the option copy path as free marker. And then this will, if we paste this in, then it basically gives us the syntax that's needed to pull that value. And that's pretty much it for the web experience template. There's a few more options for the web experience template. Uh, let's explore these additional tabs. We have the configure, which we already shown what, what's in there. There's also the help tab. This just shows additional documentation that could be useful. And then finally, there's the settings tab. This is the settings that are applied to your web experience template. So you might want to provide a description if you're going to create a bunch of web experience templates, then you might want to provide a more detailed description. Then you can also provide an icon. There's only pre-built ones. You can't upload any others, but you might find one that's what you're looking for. If we wanna be able to render a preview, especially as a marker goes to create an experience, which we'll show in a second, then you'll need to have this option checked. And the last option is the out of the box template. This is a way that you can make this out of the box. This would put this under the out of the box templates facet when you're searching for an experience to create from a template, as well as a few other things. And it's really only visible if you're an administrator on this tenant. So now that that's done, let's talk about creating a web experience. But before we do that, just one last step, we must make sure that this is published. So now that that's done, we'll close this and now we'll go ahead and create a web experience. So we'll click experiences and then web and I'll click on create experience and I'll create one called experience demo. And now it pops up an option to create a new variant web experience based on a existing template. And so we have the option to create one based on our existing out of the box templates, which are ones that have that checkbox checked or we have the user created one that we just created. If you wanna create a one-off template, you can also select the option no, new empty template. But for this, we're gonna select our featured blog post template. And because we checked that checkbox to have a preview render or inline rendering, then we see what it looks like. Although I must admit it doesn't look that great, but it just shows how we can style this or it gives an interface that's easy for markers to, to add a title or a description to. So we can add a simple title and then say, hello friend, this is Sitecore Personalized. And we'll add a styling of purple, Sitecore purple, not quite, but close enough. And that's pretty much it. We know we didn't save because we don't have a preview option. So we'll just save this real quick. Obviously I didn't save it because I just created it. You can also do control S. That's a pretty easy way to save those changes. And that's pretty much it for creating a web 
experience uh, variant. Now we'll create a page targeting for this. Uh, I want to limit this variant or this uh, web experience from only displaying on my site. So if you're creating a this on a tenant where you have a bunch of websites running from the same tenant, then you'll need to make sure that you limit it only to the sites that you want it to. If you don't do this step, then Every time you create a web experience, it will show up on every site, on every page, and no limitations there. So my site is dylanyoung.dev, so I will specify dylanyoung.dev as one of the, um, so I'm saying match on if it contains Dylan Young Dev, or if it contains localhost is the other option first. Um, but one last thing to mention is advanced targeting, so if you have any advanced criteria that you want to use JavaScript to match on, then you could use advanced targeting with JavaScript instead. But for now, we're just going to save those changes and we'll close that. And so now we have our web experience created. Well, that concludes today's presentation of creating a web experience template and then creating that web experience using that template. Now in my next video, we're going to show that web experience that we just created working on my personal website and then we're going to talk a little bit about the debugging and testing steps that we can go through to just if you run into issues you can test and make sure that um, how to get it working correctly thank you and until next time good luck on creating your first web experience template goodbye